Rockford, Alaska is the premier medevac team here in Alaska. We are a dedicated flight program with nurse practitioners, flight nurses, flight paramedics with two helicopters, two Learjets, and a King Air. Lifeguard is a group of people that cares about Alaska, a group of people that wants to give care to the residents of Alaska to go get the sick and the injured and, and give them the care and the help that they need. We're very similar to a ground ambulance, but a ground ambulance with wings and a lot of extra fun gadgets. We're kind of a combination of ambulance and emergency room and intensive care unit um, in the sky, whether it be an airplane or a helicopter. It's the rush. It's, it's like working in an, an emergency room, but way better, way more autonomy, and way cooler toys. You have to be a person of excellence to do this job and to do it well. We're sent out on our plane to villages where maybe even the sat phone won't work. The entire village will gather around the runway and watch us come, and uh, they expect miracles to come out of the sky, and, and we're the miracles in blue suits that, that come to aid their loved one or their fellow villager. Knowing that lifeguard is coming means I'm gonna be okay. Lifeguard's on the way, we're, we're gonna be fine. Knowing that we're going out and, and doing something dangerous, but that we're doing it for, for a greater purpose than ourselves is definitely part of something that speaks to us about this job. I'm an emergency room nurse, been working in nursing 32 years. In April of 2006, uh, about 10.30 at night, I developed chest pain. Uh, I had my wife call the EMS and they took me to my emergency room that I work at. I actually died in the ER. They brought me back and realizing that I was having a heart attack, they chose to medevac me to Providence. If the helicopter and lifeguard wasn't there, it would have been a four-hour trip. I, I'm not sure if I would have survived. Time is muscle. And every minute that my heart was craving oxygen, it was dying. Without lifeguard, I would either be dead or incapacitated. For me, it was recognizing that these folks are not only saving my life, but they're risking theirs. On December 3rd, Lifeguard 1, 141 Lima Gulf, was coming back from Cordova with a patient. Our pilot, our flight nurse, and our flight paramedic were on board. And they went down into the water in Passage Canal outside of Whittier. We still don't know what happened because we've never found the helicopter and we've never found the body of the pilot. Right now, we believe it was weather. The way that the weather came into that area at that time in the evening indicates to us that he may have hit a wall of weather. Uh, he may have iced over. It was very difficult. We train on a fairly regular basis to respond to these sorts of missing aircraft, overdue aircraft, crashed aircraft. There is no preparing for the real thing. As the events unfolded, you come to realize, okay, this is not a drill. We're really looking for our coworkers. We're really looking for our teammates and our helicopter. You had to continue on looking and wanting them to be alive. When we found the body of our flight nurse, John, it really confirmed for us that, yes, there's been a terrible tragedy. We're probably not gonna find them alive. And that's when you start moving into your grieving and your mourning. From the time that we all first found out about it until the time that we began to have a little bit of closure um, was the better part of six days um, that we all spent huddled around in various conference rooms in the hospital and eating every meal uh, together as one big family. We slept in dispatch, we slept on conference room floors. I don't think there was anyone that left the entire time. Um, it, it did wonders for bringing us together. I think that our team responded remarkably well to the tragedy that we had. They kept themselves busy for that five days. They planned a candlelight vigil. A good buddy of mine was on that helicopter. We'd been friends since we were kids. And being a part of the vigil and being able to help was my part of being able to honor him and, and honor the, the friendship that we had. 
there's a lot of faith within the community here in Providence. And even if people weren't of the Catholic denomination, they fell back to the spiritual aspect of prayer, hope, faith. I mean, we were having food delivered, flowers, cards, offers of help, offers of houses and anything that we needed that it was just incredible. It was incredible to, to know how much the community supports us as a whole here at LifeGuard. I know a lot of folks were surprised when we said that we were setting up chairs for 800 people um, plus standing room in our hangar for the memorial service. Uh, and when the, when the staff and family of LifeGuard walked into the back of the hangar and, and there wasn't an empty chair in the place, that said a lot. We didn't just lose a crew member, we lost three crew members and a family member that you know, had been entrusted into our care. We were 21 years accident incident free. When you have a tragedy like this, it really speaks to how much the administration really cares about their people and about how their people are taken care of. The administration's response to our tragedy was phenomenal. I think if there's anything positive that came out of December, we've decided this can be better, this can be easier, and this can be safer. And I think that that's done a lot to kind of ease the minds, I know certainly of, of our families um, that have to see us leave every morning, um, but of the people that work here as well. You have to go on. You have to get up and realize that there are other people out there waiting for you to help them. There are other people out there expecting you to be there when the phone rings. And now we sort of carry on the, the work that the sisters began to all the various places that we go. When you're out there, all eyes are on you. Everyone's expecting miracles. And I think that it's our job to deliver nothing less than that.